Well, this is it. This is the old power portable power station, the version of 606 watts. It basically can store a bit over 600 watts of electricity for multiple uses, with all kind of output ports. Are you ready to hear a very honest review, non-sponsored and non-affiliate? Stay tuned. This is Gabriel from Lovelyscape and you are about to find out everything is to know about the all power portable power station 606 watts with a 100 watts portable solar panel. To get it with the very beginning, when you are away camping, traveling and so on, we need power to charge our phones, cameras, tablets or laptops, even drones. 606 watts is quite a lot of electricity stored in this little device. Not so little, it's quite heavy though, but 600 watts is more than enough to keep us charged and connected for a long period of time, depending on what you are charging. And with the 100 watt solar panel which came with, the new, with my unit, I'm about to have infinite amount of energy to use for most of my electronic devices, as long, of course, as there is sun to charge it. This power station comes with pros, and yes, it comes with cons, but about that we are going to find out a little bit later, okay? For now, let's go a bit over the specs, shall we? As input ports, you have three different kinds of inputs. The wall charging, which includes the massive power brick and is charged around 100 watts per hour. Uh, you have also the solar input where you can connect the so your solar panel. Also, as a side note, with the solar panel which comes with all power portable sp power station, you can connect it as well to the DC input socket which is used to charge from the brick, which make it all possible to use two solar panels at the same time, via one, one of them of course via solar charging port and the other one via the DC input port or whatever the name it has. Oh yes, and uh, the third way to charge is via the USB-C port which has input-output function. This, this actually makes useful if you have a car cigarette lighter on your car with USB-C output. You can charge it the power station straight from the car while driving. I think the input uh, USB-C supports up to 60 watts per hour of charging if I'm not wrong, but in my opinion the input-output USB-C sucks a little bit, I'm sorry, but that's the truth, because if I try to charge my Asus laptop via USB-C, in fact, the power station is charging, draining the battery from the laptop, which forces me to use the wall socket instead. Same thing happens if I try to charge my other power banks via USB-C from the power station, instead it charges the power station from my other power banks, but of course there's always a workaround for these little issues. Anyway, let's get back to port. So input, DC from power bank, solar panel or dual solar panels and USB-C. Now let's see what kind of output ports it has this power station. It has the following, one USB-C with input output function as mentioned about. The positive side of this that is that it gives up to 60 watts of fast charging, which charges all my devices one by one in no time. As an instance, my iPad is charged actually very, very fast, and I don't need my wall socket to be able to do that. You also have three USB-A's, of which, of course, two of them are 3.0, and I think one of them is 2.0 or something like that. I can't remember sure, but... Uh, I do, I do know that two of them charge faster than the last one and that's also mentioned on uh, the book. And it also has two output DC ports, which I never use them, and one car cigarette lighter socket. And of course, the most important, it has two of 230 volts for the European model outputs which support up to around 500 volts output per hour. With this, you can basically connect a lot of household electronics. Your laptop, as an example, the electric pump for my airbed, which I use it in my tent. So many devices with uh, under 500 watts per hour as power consumption. I can connect to the wall socket, but it's a power station socket. <laughs> and of course, for gamers, you can plug in your gaming laptop and play games outdoors for a while, depending on your laptop power consumption. The absolute main reason I choose this power station over the others is that the 230 volts sockets does support at the same time UK plugs and European plugs. And as a person who lived in the UK and travels around Europe, I have 
a mixture of UK and European plugs which all fits perfectly into those sockets. Some other things the power station has are two of one watt lights and a small illuminated screen which shows you some information such as battery percentage, either input or output voltage, was turned on and so on. The power station also has Bluetooth and you can monitor it via the All Powers app. What do I think about all these features the All Power Portable Power Station 606 watts has? Well, very useful, a lot of big pros in this field and I had personally used all of these features with no issues, of course uh, except the DC output, I don't have anything to for the DC output. But anyway, only their app, the at least the iPhone app is a bit wonky <laughs> as I can say and it could be improved. Now. Let's have a look at their 100 watts portable solar panel, which is optional. It falls into two for transportation. It's quite lightweight, it comes with two connection cables. One is the solar charging standard and the other one is the DC cable. But both cables are really short, in my opinion. I had to cut one and extend it with some other cables. But of course, you can do this also, but at your own risk. Well, frankly, if the sun is up in the sky during the summer, I was able to charge at around 80 watts per hour input from the solar panel. But either there is an issue, either I don't know enough about the efficiency of the solar panels. After the solar panel gets hot, and believe me, it will, the efficiency drop with 10 to 15 watts at least, charging way less than before. Before we get to the downside of the all power portable power station 606 watts, Let's talk about the safety feature. First thing, don't leave it in the sun while charging. It becomes real hot, real fast, and there is no safety feature at all. At least not nothing to cool it down. But that's common. It's not meant to be kept in the sun. So the AC inverter when it's on, at times a cooler will start cooling down to avoid overheating. More current you pull or higher temperature or outdoors, more it will spin exactly like a computer or laptop ventilator. If you use it in hot weather, that might even stay on continuously. Moreover, as far as my knowledge, the batteries also has a cooler to cool them down when they get hot. But that goes on rarely, though, as I presume, most of the time they stay at a good level temperature. If you plug in something with consumption higher than 500 watts or with very high peaks at start, the AC with safety will go off, turning off by itself and warning you. You can restart the AC a few seconds later with no issues. This will prevent any damages to the power station battery or inverter. Now, probably you had waited a long time for the downside of the all power portable power station 606 watts. Or maybe you just skip it right here. Starting with a minor downside, the percentage level is not always accurate. It just happens randomly and seems not to be calibrated properly. No matter how many times I charge it from zero to full to provide a proper calibration. No, it just doesn't do it right. Moreover, after you reach 100%, the power station will keep charging for a lot longer while the input voltage will slowly drop. It is too bad that there is absolutely no way, or at least I didn't found any ways to update the software to fix the issue with the all power portable power station, at least this model 606 watts. I also have to mention that if you have your solar panel connected to the all power unit and you have a lot of power consumption for some reason the percentage freezes and remains at the same percentage for long time. As an example, as you see in this video, I fast forward a lot. If I disconnect the solar panel, this will actually drop, start dropping percentage, but once I start connecting again the solar panel to the unit the percentage freezes again on the same spot. This makes uh, the unit not to be calibrated, the percentage. You don't know the real percentage, how much battery you have left in the unit. It could be less, it could be more. It just doesn't show you properly. I also tested the integrity of the battery with a 12 volt fridge, which constantly and accurately drained about 55 watts continuously. And the test was from 100% drop to 1% while not charging it at all, result in about 590 watts of usable energy, which is extremely good. 
Some other units and power station may have even 15 to 20 percent of unusable energy. In the past couple of months since I have this unit, I had used it over 50 times from full charge to full discharge and the battery remained stable all the way. The efficiency will drop to about 80% of usable battery after 600 uses more or less. It all depends also on how you charge and discharge your battery. I do hope this battery to last for years to come. As I am writing this script, the script of this video, I am charging my iPad from the battery and my phone as well while I am on camping. So yes. The all power portable power station 606 watts is a great device with some minors flow but usable once you get used to keep connecting and disconnecting the solar panel to manually calibrate the percentage. Thank you very much for watching this video. This was my absolute honest review about the all power portable power station 606 watts with a 100 watt solar panel from the all power. This was not an affiliate video nor I was sponsored in any way to make it. It is just my honest review after using it for a while, the power station, after I bought it, with some goods and some bads. All the best to you and I hope to see you next time.